People are looking for something real. God is looking for someone real. Be real. Live from the Be Real Lounge, you're with us in the lounge. Your host, Daniel Lewis and Brother Brad Haynes. How you doing? Well, howdy, man. Good to have you back, dude. Yeah, it's good to be back. Man, it feels good. We've just been having having a lot of fun, man, digging in the Bible already. Just, yeah, it's fun, man. And then the dog starts. Yeah, June is kicking off the show. Dang on, man. That's all right. She giving me. Giving me trouble. I built her a fire in there. It's plenty <laughs> warm. I can't have her walking all around. But hey, we're being real, so who knows? That's what, it. It's good to be back to, in the lounge. I have to go and deal with her. Yeah, I enjoyed the uh, last week's phone edition, but I, it still wasn't. It wasn't nearly the same. Whenever you try to have a phone conversation with somebody, it's it's totally different. I've got into the over the years just. I've talked to a bunch of people over the phone, especially old friends, and it's nothing like going and actually meeting them. I'm like, now I tell them, hey, steady, let's, let's let's wait and talk about this. Now, if it's urgent, we'll talk about it. Right. But usually I like to meet. Let's, let's, let's go and meet because there's something about being together face to face. You know, technology just doesn't. Yeah. Just doesn't do it. Even though I'm, I'm grateful for all the people listening because you're actually right here in the lounge with us. Yeah. And that's cool. But I mean, still, if you'd like to get a hold of us, give us a call and uh, we'll try to or give us a shoot us an email and uh, we'll try to uh, try to get together with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. It just uh, I don't know, man, being able to read someone else's 97 percent of human communication is body language I'd say. and and we i mean that's something i actually i'm yeah. not just saying it, it's yeah. a psychology thing and i mean without that we really don't understand communication you know and i don't know that's a big part of human you got something in your eye <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you wouldn't human, know that i mean just yeah. there talking. and see that well isn't that funny how that works mm-hmm. i mean all these little signals that we send and they all say something but what's what's crazy man is how uh, the world man really says i'm saying all this stuff 97 percent to you through my body but that's not really what i'm saying because <laughs> it's like this passive aggressive kind of world and society that we live in now man nobody is real nobody will come out and say what they really are feeling man which is a lot better than all the other stuff and then it, it just turns into a big mess man yeah. but i i i actually loved this show man it was fun i felt empty here without you man just talking you know to the phone it was weird but um very weird. i thought that it was still powerful and i'm glad we did it completely unique and something different but yeah. it, it really is nice to to have you back man just be breaking it down and hanging out and that's it I, it, this is so much fun, really, man, like, because we have to do, we have to talk about Jesus, man. So just doing it in this conversational form is so, it so is. cool, man. But, um, and it's, it's weird that it's, I mean, it's just, it's not really weird. I don't know. I use that word a lot, weird, crazy, all kinds of stuff, but it's just, it's amazing when you get to know him and you're spending time with him, that he brings out what you love to do. Yeah. And it's actually you, you start going, oh, yeah, because he designed us to begin with. Yeah. And so why wouldn't you love to do what he's wanting you to do? Yeah. I mean, he designed us to do that. And so he knew that he gave us the passion, I guess you could say. Yeah. People that love to play the banjo yeah. or play the guitar. Now, that's something that has to be learned. But if you have that talent or willingness to do it beforehand, yeah. and you, you give somebody that learns – just straight up learns the guitar they can become really really good yeah but you have somebody that's already got that talent they say they got it through their musical family or whatever actually they got it from god god's passed that around down through there and when they get that i mean and they play oh it's just it's like a art i mean it really right. is it's just master yeah. you're just like whoa i've never heard anything like that before yeah and so when you, uh, it's and just, it's just know, amazing what he's designed us for. What's cool too is that, I mean, people like that have an inclination and a passion for it, 
but then that passion comes out in hours and hours and hours yeah. of playing it. Yeah. Like I know some dudes like that. The guitarist that I used to play with, man, is one of the best that I've ever heard in my life. Went to music school for it, everything. But I mean, he spent hours, you know, practicing and playing. But the thing is, man, when you love something, it's not really, it doesn't feel like work. You're devoting your whole self to it. And, and that's what we all have to find, man, is what our passion is because life really doesn't have any meaning. And, and Jesus has given us that way to find ourselves in him and to be that. And, and everyone has that. We do, Daniel. We just got to have to. And, and I, know, I know some people that might listen to this and maybe all of them or hopefully not all of them, but, you know, they'll. Well, I don't have a talent or I'm not good at anything better than anybody else. I'm not true. I go to this job and I do my work and I come home and I see my family and then I watch some TV and go to sleep and get up the next day. It's, that's not true. It's I not mean, true. You, you have something that no one else has. God has designed you. Yeah. It may be similar to another talent that somebody has, but it's not like anybody else. He has designed you specifically. And if you're wondering what that is, find him. And it, Seek after him, and these things shall be given to you. Yeah. Now, when you read that, most people, are, or most preachers, I guess you could say, that read this, it's like, seek him, seek the kingdom first, and all these things shall be added unto you. It's like they're talking about riches and cars and all this junk. It's mm-hmm. actually, if you seek after him, you'll find yourself. Yes. You'll actually find your life. Yes. The life that he's given you to begin with through his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it's amazing. I mean, it's, it's it's so fulfilling, and it might not be fine cars and fancy homes, and I'm definitely sh- pretty sure it probably won't be fine cars and fancy homes. But it'll be, it will be what makes you real. Yeah, I'm trying to describe it the best way I can, but it it will give yeah. you meaning to your life to where that stuff does not even matter whatsoever because you actually have what your heart desires most of, and that's all of us is meaning to life who i really am what really defines me does fine cars and fancy homes really define me the human question man what it really all comes down to for all of us and i've had this conversation a bunch had it a lot in college man the question that everybody wants answered is who am i Mm -hmm. and why am i here yeah at the end of the day every human being has that question he has the answer, and the, the, what you're explaining Praise and what I'm saying is it unfolds. Yes. It isn't something that you have, and okay, now what is my talent? I'm going to do this and figure it out. That's like the world does it. You're going to kill all the creativity of the talent. Mm. You you have to just, you have to roll with it, and he gives it to you as you stay connected. But there's nothing to figure out. There's nothing. It's a relationship to have and to to hold on to and to fulfill as you you do it with all of your might. You know, I mean, at the end of my life, man, I I mean, if it's tomorrow, I don't want I want to if when I meet him at the end, man, I want to say I didn't have anything left. Everything I had for that day, I poured it out. Mm. There was nothing that I was leaving like I was exhausted at the end of the day. I got nothing left. And and if we live every day like that, it's back to my favorite quote, a successful life is not the result of chance, fate, or mere fortune, but rather through a succession of successful days. If we have successful days with Christ, you add all those up, you have a successful life. But if you try and get a successful life and you don't live it by the day, you're not going to have a successful life because you didn't have the days to make the life. That's it. And you work for all this stuff, and you might get all this stuff, but you won't be happy. Mm-hmm. You won't have joy. No. You, you will not have any kind of joy. You, you just want more. You'll be somebody else. Yeah. But we're we're pushed into this. We're, this. This stuff is shoved in our face. I mean, just think about it. Growing up as a kid and as a teenager, TV is shoved in your face. Magazines, you're standing at the aisle at the supermarket, shoved in your face. All these different lifestyles these idols american idols are shoved in our face to where we want to be like that little seven-year-old girl what does she want to be like 
she wants to be like well at when i was growing up it was britney spears or new kids on the block or you know all these uh could be a baseball player or a football player or all these american idols yeah. i mean you know you wanted to be like that i want to i want to sing like they do i want to dance on stage like they do and it's cool to have dreams it's really cool to have dreams but we got to look to god and see what we were designed to do even these people i mean they may have the talent to do this stuff uh but you know they were designed for god's will they weren't designed for their own will now we may feed them and give them this and give them that and millions of dollars every year and stuff like that they might have an awesome life but they're not being who god wants them to be well when you were saying that it made me think of when you were saying the little girls and what's presented what we want to become if you don't realize that that's what the deal is you're deceived because yeah. look at these cultures man where the dudes put the big uh, plates in their lips mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All the, style. all the people want to be them. Yeah. So I'm telling you, if in Esquire magazine or whatever it magazine, I don't, I don't even know what that magazine is. Not trying <laughs> to single them out, but it sounded cool. If you, <laughs> if it did, it did. okay, whatever in L magazine or any of these other magazines, if we saw people with plates in their lips from the time that we were little, we'd all be wanting plates in our lips, and see that is a powerful component of of social psychology that we have to look at because jesus spoke to it he's like you have to understand your condition scrap all that to follow me and then i'll make you new i'll make you who you were always meant to be that's it and then for some reason we're like i don't want to be who i was meant to be i want to be this other thing that i'm going to create that gives me no peace joy happiness or any fulfillment of who i am uh -uh. downward spiral you know, but I mean, we have to stop right now and think, what is it? And I've been doing this with me. I'm not just preaching to y'all. We all have to do this. What in your life are you looking at today that you're wanting to be somebody with a plate in their lip? It's as foolish as that. What is it for really? me today where I'm like, yeah, I want to be that guy with a plate in the lip. I mean, American we, Idol. We have to look at that. We have to look at that issue, and then we have to look at the other thing that I always ask myself, what am I believing today that's just like believing that the world is flat? There's something that we're all, we don't all have the answers. Today there's something in me where I'm thinking the world is still flat, and he's like, look over here, I want to reveal it's round. So, I mean, those two things, think about those things. That's the and, truth of it. You know, Look up the definition of idol. Just look up the definition of idol. Man. But I'll let you know something. Be Real will never have a magazine. No. If no. we ever have anything, it'll be a book. And that's not us. That's everybody. We'll have a book. And when you open it up, it'll be the cover on the Bible. Right. Because that's all you need. That's all you need. You need man. the Word of God. Get into that. Spirit and be and real. Yeah. Be real. Man, it was cool that you're saying the be real stuff. You had read me that devotional that you get. Yeah. I mean, if you'd like to, I'd like you to read that because to me, it's like one in the spirit thing. This is a whole different ministry. You got this and read this, and it's basically the same thing that we feel so much passion for. I think the Lord is stirring this idea in a lot of people, bro. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I, I read this every morning or whenever I think about it, sometimes during the day, I go, oh, yeah, I need to get into my devotional. But I try to read it in the morning. Sometimes you just don't have times in the morning. You're kind of running yeah. around. And I opened this one today. This is for January 20th, 2016. I actually shared it with Brad when I got here because I thought it was really weird i was like man this is a, once you hear it you're like whoa i mean that guy just you know you'll yeah. see so anyway it starts out in this uh this is talking about joining together and, and following his examples talking about paul when he's uh, writing to the philippians uh chapter 3 verse 17 but anyway it gets into the devotional it says several years ago i received a letter from an r daily bread reader after i had written about a family tragedy when you told when you told about your tragedy, this person wrote, I realized that the writers were real people with real problems. How true that is. I look across the list of men and women who pen these articles and I see cancer and wayward children and unfulfilled dreams and many other kinds of loss. We are we are indeed just regular, real people writing about a real God who understands our real problems. The Apostle Paul stands out in the Real People Hall of Fame. 
He had physical problems. He had legal issues. He had interpersonal relationship struggles to deal with. And in all of this messy reality, he was setting us an example. In Philippians 3.17, he said, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Those around us who need the gospel, who need Jesus, are looking for believable people who can point them to our perfect Savior. And that means we must be real. And I thought that was pretty cool for today. I was heading out the door and I said, Yeah, I gotta read my devotional and it was that that was it. Yeah. And it's our daily bread. It's the devotional for today. And uh it has a little prayer at the end. I always love their they have, you know, the, the, the devotional and then there's a little prayer and it says, You Lord are perfection. Yet you welcome us imperfect people to come to you for salvation. You sent your perfect son to die to, to earth to die for us. Help us to be real and genuine as we seek to point people to you. Praise God. And Amen. that's our prayer here. I mean, that really is. I pray to him all the time throughout the day and especially on my way over here and uh, but the day before and everything. I'm praying that um, anything that we can say or do, just use us. It's not us. Yeah. It's just, Lord, you know, you've given me all this. Just, you know, speak through me. I don't have anything. I don't have anything. Just like before yeah. we, we come in here and we talk for a couple hours or an hour before we got on the air here yeah. today, just like we usually do. And we're like, wow, I wish we just recorded all that. But I mean, it's, it's, it's whatever he'll have. It and is, it always man. it always blows my mind too cuz he is so he's great. He is, man. And just be the guitar. Don't well, <laughs> hey, I mean it's setting there. I mean, boy, it I have is. to talk about that. I think the Holy Spirit is doing is starting to be real fire, man, in the world. He's doing the same thing with people for them to write that is saying they're feeling the same conviction that we are. That's like let we've gone off the slip and slide. Let's get back. But it's like me and you were talking. I brought my guitar up here because the little cabin is cold. We've been having some really cold weather, and I didn't want it to, to crack or anything. But we were sitting there looking at it, man, and I'm saying, that's a cool guitar, man, and it has a lot of music in it only if someone plays it. If I pick it up and play it, it can make music. But I said, I challenge that guitar right now that we're both looking at. I said, okay, make a song. It's he, not doing much. Is he it? didn't do anything. No, the guitar's said, not doing I nothing. say, get on it. <laughs> he just still I'm being lazy today. No, and that's <laughs> and that's us, man. We act like we act like we're gonna. I'm gonna watch a song. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna get on it, and no song comes out. Mm -mm. And all that that thing has to do is be willing for me to to play it, and that's then it. the music will come. And that's the connection of the vine. Everything else assaults that man and gets in the way of it, you know. And that reminds me of of the of my devotional man. This morning I read all the time from the Oswald Chambers, my utmost for his highest. I got a couple that I read, but this is a really good one. It's the most widely uh, read devotional of all time now. And uh, the one two sentences that stood out to me this morning that ties in with the guitar thing is he says the golden rule for your life and mine is this concentrated keeping of the life open towards God. It's this concentration, this going to him, you know, he said, let everything else work, clothes, food, everything on earth go by the board, saving that one thing. And people say, well, really? Well, that's just what Jesus taught. He said the same thing in Matthew 6, 25. Let everything else, work, clothes, food, that, that's not what the, your pursuit of life is. If you pursue him, you're going to get all those things too. But if you pursue them, you don't get him. He says, the rush of other things always tends to obscure this concentration on God. Hmm. That's our battle, man, is to let him play us but not get wrapped up in the playing because once again if he sets us down i'm looking at that guitar i challenge it let me see it yeah. and he's once again silent and so you know i mean that's a hard thing though that's the human condition that's the fall of mankind that's, that's back it. to that one question who am i and why am i here just be real you know it's all right so all we're saying 
Because, uh, you know, when, when I think about it, and, and we had read a little bit out of Matthew 19 there about the guy coming to Jesus and saying, you know, yeah. I've, I've done these good deeds. What do I? What else do I need to do to be saved? Right. And Jesus is saying, you know, there's only one who is good. There's right. nothing good about you. There's right. no good thing that you can do. Right. And you hear that so many times. I'm doing this good stuff. I'm doing this good stuff, you know. And people feel accomplished by doing good things. And he will, if you get to know him. He will work through you and you will do good because only because he's working through you. Yeah. But, you know, just like Jesus also says, from from the man, from the heart of man comes all these evil uh, thoughts, uh, evil you know, blasphemy, uh, just everything, uh, you know, just everything out of your mouth and everything in your heart just comes out. Murder, envy, deceit, covetousness. All this stuff, and you know, this this is sinful man. That's what it is, and so nothing yeah. ever good can come out of it. That's why we have to we have to have Jesus Christ and look well, to Him because He is good, Daniel, the only good. I mean, did the disciples and Jesus did He ever lead them? And I'm going to take this out of context a little, but I'm trying to make a point. Mm-hmm. Did He ever lead them to start a 501c3 and start a soup kitchen and do a civic? Uh, thing did he ever call people together to do a good work did he ever say now let's come together and feed these people or do whatever i mean his ministry was about preaching the word of god and when they came in he didn't say now we can't have this preaching until we have enough food to feed all these people he just was preaching they were they were kind of hungry they had been there three days he, he didn't have all that. He didn't say, now let's run a fun drive to get all of, so we need a lot of figs and dates. Um, what are what, pomegranates? Okay, let's get all them, and then I'll do this preaching. He just started preaching. They came, they came, and, and sought first his righteousness. They were hungry, and he said, what do you got? I mean, that was always powerful to me that he could have made it out of thin air. He said, I'll raise children out of the stones. I'll make them cry out for me, whatever. He can do anything he wants. But see, we have to bring everything that we have. All they had was the seven, you know, and the loaves, and and he multiplied them. Yeah. And what, see, what, did, what did he do first? But, but did he, he, didn't did he put start. on a feeding, and they all came to the feeding, and then he preached while they were eating. See, but why have we exchanged? We make it for, okay, okay, I love Jesus. Now let's put Jesus aside and let's start a soup kitchen. And we're going to serve him that way. And I'm not saying that he won't feed people through you. He will all day long. But I really don't. Do you? Am I wrong here? Do you ever see any place where he gathered all these people together to do some civic 501c3 thing? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I mean, I don't either. Which, he went to them. I mean, it, it was he just a, went to them. The preaching is the the everything else happens from people hearing the truth, and then he inspires it. That's another thing that I point out with the Good Samaritan. He said, "What is love of your neighbor?" Okay, so people want to get in. Well, we need to feed people. We need to do this. We need to clothe people, or whatever. Yeah, but I'm arguing that that must take place in your individual life. And then if we're both individually doing it, we get together, then we have Brad and Daniel squared. But if you look at that Good Samaritan example, man, he was on his way about his own business. Okay, the the people passed him by. This guy was about his own business, and he stopped. This is his life, man. It's not he didn't stop and say, okay, I need to start a uh, 501c3 for wavered poor people that have been beaten. He he saw him himself in his life. He got down off his horse and he cared for the man as he saw him in his own life. And, yeah. and that is the that's the model for love of your neighbor. What we've done is just like we've done with the church. We want to forsake loving people when they come across our individual path in whatever way he's he's telling us. And that he'll let you know. You don't have to ask the question. He'll let you know what the purpose is. Yeah. That man knew I need to bandage him up. I need to do all this. And then this is a cool part of that analogy, too. He he didn't. He took care of his needs there and then he took him to the end. And, and he paid for his board for there. So it wasn't that he's like, okay, now I've got adopted this guy and I'm going to take him around with me everywhere I go. 
no, the guy still had his own life. He didn't want to be following this guy around anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, he just set him up on his own feet. See, it's not about making someone dependent on us. That's what we want to do a lot of times with helping other people, too, is they need help. I want to make them now dependent on me so I can keep doling out the help so I keep feeling like I did a good deed, so now I got a good reward. And yeah. what he's wanting you to do is treat them like you'd want to set them up on their feet, get them in their own life, and then leave them alone yeah. <laughs> and care for their needs and move on. You know, but we want to forsake all of that stuff. It's kind of cool. Back to your analogy with the good deeds. We want to say, what good deed can I do? And I'm going to point this out. Then I'll shut up because I've gone on a little tear here. Nice. Is that um, when he pointed that out to the guy, and I had never thought about that, but in our conversation, we were talking about it, mm -hmm. is that they were still under the law at that point. Jesus hadn't shed his blood. You know, so this guy couldn't be covered up by that at that point that he was asking him. So he's like, you need to do what you're supposed to do under the law until I've fulfilled the law and made it new in me. That's it. You know, but we get hung up on that, too. And it's like a lot of people say, OK, well, I'm going to I'm good because I've followed all the commandments. No, you hadn't. You hadn't followed all the commandments. He said no one followed all the commandments. That's there was it. one perfect life, Jesus all fall short of the glory of God. So that's why I'm so thankful for the sun. Praise God. Yeah. Every day. I just thank so thankful. Especially yeah. some somebody is so unworthy. Me, definitely so unworthy. Me too. But I, I'm man. I'm grateful that he's worthy. I can't believe he And that's why I, I know I still can't believe it. I mean I do believe it. I do I, don't mean. I do believe it. It's just unbelievable. I it mean, is. you know, that a God loves us so much to to die for us. So we can have that relationship with him because he knows there's no other way. He knows there's no other way. Lord, how many how many folks and people make so many different ways. And he's made the way. It's so simple. It is so simple. He's made the way. It's a free gift, grace, that I don't deserve. No. Nobody deserves it. But he's made that way because he loves us so much. And that if that's not unconditional love is... I don't know what it is. If it's not unconditional love, I don't know what it is. I and don't know what it is. It's all true because if he wouldn't, if he would use you and I in any way, knock on our hearts, I'm telling you, it's real because yeah. there is. We're just a couple of schmoes, man. That's and it. Worse than a schmo. So well, you you had something. You had something on your. I was just going to kind of go back into the to the that we've lost looking at the Bible. In, in gathering the people and the example that Jesus has given to us, we, we put on feedings hoping people will come and then we'll preach the gospel to them, hoping, uh, hoping, hoping that their full bellies will turn them to Christ. We put on music. Uh, we have these bands that come out, especially the better known, the better. So we'll 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 raise the money to get these good bands to come in because people will hear that name and they'll go, ooh, and that'll draw them to come. And then we can hopefully draw them to Christ. First of all, the Father draws, the Son draws to the Father. The Holy Spirit draws man yeah. to the Father. Right. We can't draw anything. Yeah. And number two, for in, right here in Romans, says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Yeah. The gospel of Christ is the power of salvation. Well, remember when Jesus said, Y'all didn't come to hear the word, in paraphrasing. He said, you, you came because you ate and had your fill. That's it. See, like, that's always, you're getting in his way because he wants people to come for the word, get hungry, and then see him feed them. He doesn't want people to come he didn't even to, want them to come to get healed to be gluttonous yeah. so they can uh, avoid the word yeah you're just following me because <clears throat> you were healed at one point he said that several times you're just following me because of the miracles you saw i don't see that motto in the bible daniel i don't either. i don't and it's just to make us feel better about ourselves and what we're supposed to be doing how many of us that would organize it and do it away from our homes and say i'm going to get together with seven other people and we're going to cook hot dogs and feed it to the poor if someone knocks on your door i need a hot dog hey there's a hot dog stand down the road Do we i mean would you give them the hot dog out of your own home yeah even in, even in John, there was one point where Jesus goes into a house and there was people outside trying to get in and he didn't go out because he knew men. He yeah. said he knew men. Yeah. They were just there for the healing. 
They just wanted a healing and they were going on. They wasn't listening to what he had to say. And when finally a bunch of them did listen to what they had, he had to say, they left. Because they were right. like, whoa, this is uh, what? You know, eat the flesh, eat the blood. This yeah, is not. I mean, right. they didn't understand what he was saying. No. They were spiritually. He's like, if you don't understand what I'm saying spiritually, how will you understand if I tell you earthly things? I know, man. And I mean, don't you think my argument is this? I believe that in the in the body of believers, man, that whatever need he wants met, he brings a, across each person. I think today, if we were all yielding to him, there would be no need on the planet because everybody that has a need has someone in their life that could fulfill that need that just isn't doing it and trying to point them to somewhere else. Now, a lot of the things that people call needs are not needs, and we need to tell them that's not a need. You just need to get in the word. That's it. You know what I mean? A lot of things that we try and do are not even a, a biblical need, and we need to be strong enough to tell the person, you, this is not biblically a need for you. You know, and we need to do that in our own lives. But I we really do. argue that right now, I believe that that every need on the planet could be met through individuals. We don't need the government to do it. We don't need some organization to do it. We need to do it. I believe that today, if if everyone that saw somebody come across their path with a need, whether that be a need for the word or a need for a hot dog or a need for a pair of shoes or a need for a rebuke. Yeah. I, I don't know. But I believe that if everyone would follow Christ today, that today all those oh, needs man. would be met. You ain't kidding. I, I really believe that, man. He's our source. You know, but what we've done is said, um, I don't think that I have to do it, but let's form an organization to do it so I can be involved in the organization when I want to and when I don't, I don't have to be. And I can point these people that I should get down off my horse and salve their wounds. I can give them a ride over to this place and then I don't have to be disrupted in my life. Or really not even go that little bit afar, just throw money at it. Yeah, man. Let's just throw some money at it. And Jesus doesn't overwhelm us. Like, you're not going to have someone come across your life every day to where you have no resources to live your own life. Because that's people's fear is, well, then what am I going to be helping people all the time? I can't even. Well, no, when they when you cross their path. If if you don't, if if it's not a part of your life, you, you, it's that's okay. It. And I've thrown this example out so many times before, and uh, and the reason I throw it out is because he showed me this in my life, because this is exactly what I was doing. And I say this, and I've said it before over and over, and I've said it a bunch of times, and I've went on and rants about it and all kinds of stuff, but it was throwing money at it. Right. Just throwing money at it. Yeah. Even in the, what we were just talking what you were just talking about, the Good Samaritan. Yeah. When he was talking about that parable. You know, did the guy just drive by and or walk by and right. see the see the <laughs> well, drive? He was, he was, he was driving was, by. Well, he was driving that horse, <laughs> he brother. He was driving that horse. <laughs> and he, but he he sees the sees the guy all beat up there, laying there dead. You know, he just didn't throw. Here's you some money. Was he on a horse? Did I get that I, wrong? I don't know. Or was Maybe it, it was a donkey? a donkey. It was probably a donkey. I, I think I'm so. pretty I'm sure. Sorry. Was, I'm pretty sure I'm it was sorry. a donkey that but he threw on, on his donkey. I don't even know if he was riding the thing yeah. or not. I think he, he may just, have been carrying his stuff. Put him on there. He just or I may have just made that up and he wasn't on a donkey. I'll go back and look at the was, story. Yeah, if I got it wrong, I'll make it right I next time. I believe it was donkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he didn't he didn't just throw money at him. That's right. Man, I'm sorry you're all tore up, you know, all this yeah. stuff. Here, here, here's just some money. That's right. He actually took care of the guy. He did. He gave the end guy, the innkeeper, some money. Yeah. And anything else, I'll be back through, and That's I'll right. pay you some more. If it costs you any more, I'll take care of this guy. He didn't throw money at him. That's right. And we throw money at everything. So we can to cleanse our guilt. Everything. We're so, to yeah. cleanse our guilt. Yeah. I don't have money the time. I don't I, have the time. But I have the money, and... 10%, man, that's what are you doing above the pagans? I mean, he's saying dip into your stuff. You, If you have one loaf of bread and someone needs half, you give them the other half. Yeah. I mean, and, and trust in him. But see, we've been we've been duped on that again because it's like, well, I'm going to do it corporately so I don't have to do it individually. Same thing we've done with our but personal relationship. I want, I want people relationship. to think about that. I want people to think about that next time they're throwing money at it. Yeah. Because, I mean, I had to go through that. I was throwing money do. at it. We all do. That's our society is to throw some money at it. Yeah. We, I mean, whether we're supporting a politician or we're giving to a hospital yeah. or we're giving to a, a society or a, 
you know, some group or organization sure. that's doing the thing. Yeah. We just throw money at it instead of what God's given us in our life. We have so many people in our lives that depend and need on us. Yeah. And it might not it's most of the time it's not even the money factor. It's just time. Giving of your time, giving of yourself, talking to somebody, listening to somebody. That's probably the number one thing. Everybody loves to talk, not everybody loves to listen. Yeah. Maybe it's, feeding someone the word. I'm sorry, yeah, go on. Feeding the word, and that always comes out. If you have him in you, you're gonna be talking about him. And they're gonna be like, you know, how come you have it all together? How come you know all this stuff? And you can point to Christ. Yeah. That's where the that's where the testimony comes out. That's where the you know That's where you say I don't have it all together. Yeah, I don't have it all together. You you just wouldn't believe it. But I'm telling you what, I know who's helping me. That's right. Like you always say, I don't have the answers, but I know the one who does. That's right. And we can point to Christ through yeah. ourselves, and that's where he wants to work, through ourselves. He just don't want us to sit there and send a check off no. or send a, throw some money at it yeah. or over at Walmart. Ding, 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 ding. Let me put some money in that bucket. I feel good. I did my good deed. I mean, he What might, good deed can I do today, Jesus? You throw might. a little money at it? Where did Jesus throw money at it? He he never had any. He told Peter to go out there and get, get some money out of the fish just to exactly go pay right. the taxes. Jesus never gave no money. I it. never saw one instance in my study of the Bible where Jesus ever touched money uh, or had it, uh, or I didn't see any. And now he may have, and they yeah. But there's a reason why God didn't have that included in the Bible. That's it. It's pretty powerful to me. It says that that is not the focus of our life, but you know what? When we seek Him. He, he takes the seven fish you have and multiplies them. I've seen it in my own life, miracles to where you're like, how did he take care of me? Well, because it's his promise. Yeah. He said, if you forsake all that nonsense and you seek me, I'll give, I know that you need that stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to give you that too. But do you really, that's the trust factor. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where it really gets serious, man, is when you start with your materialism. And do you believe, do you really believe that, like you've said before, I remember on one show, a baby doesn't ask his mom, hey, do you got enough Similac laid up for me for the next <laughs> month? I'm, I, I really, I need this Similac. Now get it. Hey, you got it? Yeah. See, I'm really worried about that Similac. If we really trusted that he cares about us and is caring for us and that we're in a relationship, he's telling us, you tell your kid what to do. You say all of this, but that he's going to provide the Similac. I mean, what See? kind of loving dad? He's like, I know you need it. But what if the baby went off all the time, man? What if your baby would never connect with you and it was always like, where's the Similac? Where's it? You would take it in to get mental health evaluation. You'd be like, what is wrong with this baby? Got an obsession over Similac. And God even uses in his word birds. Right. He uses a bird. In so many instances, he's talking about, I take care of these birds. Yeah. These birds don't even store up for winter. Right. I take care of the birds. One of these birds don't even die without me knowing it. Right. I take care of the birds. I take care of the birds. And then for the people that are Did saying, Jesus Christ die for the birds? No. no. But that's Jesus' example to us. That's right. Stinking birds. I know. How much more does he love you he besides said, these stinking birds? How much more valuable. And yeah. for the people out there going, well, we're all one. The birds are as valuable as us, not biblically. Mm -mm, he said, no. you are much more valuable than they. Yes. So I love Who the birds. Jesus I died feed for them. Us. I oh, care yeah. for them. I, birds are beautiful. You know, but we are much more. So if that's how he takes care of them, what's it going to do for us? Exactly. His example, not ours. Read mm -hmm. the word. Get to know the word. Know the word. It'll blow your mind how much he loves you. Yeah. individually loves you not a corporate right. group of believers all he loves is church yeah and it mentions that over and over and over but guess who makes up that church what is the church how can he love you it's corporately you. if you. you haven't done it individually that's it he loves you I mean, isn't that exactly the example the Old Testament was trying to point out that he said, don't claim that you're you're free because Abraham is your father. Isn't that what we've done? Well, I've met here, so collectively I'm good. Isn't that what they did? They're like, I'm, I'm a Jew. I'm a chosen person. I'm in this group. Mm. So I'm in the group. I'm good and clear. And he's like, no. I go to this building every Sunday and Wednesday. I'm in the club. 
I'm in the club. One of our members is sick and is in the hospital and dying. Let's throw some money at it. Oh, we're paying him. He'll go see. I got to work this week. He'll go see him. He'll I mean, go see him. That's why we pay him, because he'll go see him. My whole thing is, do you even know the guy? Do you even know him? You ever had a conversation with him? Because I'm telling you, my mom died, and she didn't want people coming by that she didn't have a relationship with that were just trying to make themselves feel better about her dying. Mm. And it gets on my nerves, man, that we do that. Someone dying said, I feel guilty. I want to go and take them some pot pie. Maybe they don't want to eat pot pie. My mom was so sick she couldn't eat. She wanted someone that loved her. She wanted someone that loved her around. She didn't want someone coming saying, well, this is my, this is the Lord's will. And my mom was a strong believer. See, that's the kind of stuff we do. And it's, it's, it's uh, evil is what it is. It hurts people. But yet we can leave and say, yeah, I dropped off a pot pie. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Who cares? Did you ever know the person? So, I mean, I know that's a little heavy, but if you've ever had someone die and you've seen all that cacophony of nonsense that accompanies that stuff, it'll make you sick as someone who loves someone and seeing them and, and a believer in stuff that let's quit saying stuff to people and get to know people. Back to your devotional. Let's just be real and show people that we're trying to seek him and that we got our issues and and that we are in love with our creator and we want to answer that question. Who am I and why am I here? That's it. He's you the know? only one who can answer that. We can't even answer it ourselves. You know, we can come up with all these ideas and craziness inside our own minds. I didn't mean to get heavy there, man. That's never That's come good. out for me before. But I know the rest of my to. family felt that way, too. And it was very hurtful. Yeah. And some of the most evil people, well, you man. Don't, you don't think about it. I mean, you know, we're, we're just led by what we see others do. What we've always known, that's just the commonplace thing to do. And it's not, it's not you know, if we were in the Word, we'd know. We would. I mean, we would, uh, we would be real. And, I mean, we really would. And just because someone's going through something doesn't mean they want you around them. I mean, that's something we do to make ourselves feel better, too. I mean, a lot of times the best thing to do is give someone encouragement. Yeah. Leave them alone and let them know that you're there for anything. And when you feel a need, just do it. The worst thing, too, psychological-wise, tell somebody, I'm here if you need it. So you got to make them come and beg you to do something when you see that you could do something. If you see it, if you see something they need, just do it. Don't tell them. Don't say anything about it. If they need a pot pie and you really think it, you just set one in their fridge. They don't know it came from you. doesn't matter. It just meet the need and then disappear in secret and God will reward you and he'll lift them up. He'll do it. You know, but when we do all this, I'm, you know, that's, we've killed his, he, he said, you always kill the Holy spirit in effect with, um, shutting him out. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, after starting with the Holy spirit, are you now trying to obtain your goal by human effort? And that's what we do a lot, man. I've done it a lot. Oh yeah, struggle with it every day. Well, we feel we feel you know you you get into that point to where you feel lost and you don't know what to do. What do I do? And I need answers. Yeah. And we're asking people. Yeah. We're asking man. We're following. We're following. Yeah. Let's pause it right there for a minute. We're following examples of what everybody else is doing. We're following. Yeah. Get it? That's the word. Following. Now are we following Jesus. Or are we following examples? Of what everyone else is doing. We got a plate in our lip. Who are you following? <laughs> it just goes right back. We've mentioned it before. Who are we following? I've, I've had to say that to myself. Me too. I, I still do. I still do. Wait a minute. What am I following here? Me too. Every am I following day. myself? You can get into following yourself. Oh, yeah. Real easy. Big time. You can get into following people real easy. Everybody gets up and goes out the door. I guess I better get up and go out the door too. I don't want to look silly still sitting here. It's one of the main things Satan uses to pull our strings like mm -hmm. a little puppet, man. Like a puppet. And all of the disciples had to stand up against the quote-unquote zeitgeist or the spirit of the times. The, the, the spirit and the culture of our times, man, really will put a, a chokehold 
on on our following Jesus. That's everything Jesus came to set us free from a worldview. So what is it today that you're believing that it, the world is flat? What are you trying to obtain that's as silly as a plate in your lip? Mm. And I'm going to ask myself those questions all day long because I guarantee there's something that I'm trying to get today that's as stupid as a plate in my lip. And I'm believing something that is as stupid as the world being flat. You know, mm, that's it. <laughs> and, you know, he'll show me. He said he'll reveal all of it to us if we seek him. So he said if we it, it, Paul said at one point, if you disagree with me on any point, that's OK, too, because keep seeking, basically, and the Holy Spirit will reveal that to you as well. It will. And so it's all we're begging is get into the word. Know it for yourself. Don't believe anything I've said. No, man. I mean, I try. I, I really do. I, I mean, I try, and I hope that you're listening and, and going, yeah, yeah, right. I need to look into that. But I'm telling you, <laughs> <laughs> this is me yeah. being real with you. Me too, man. And just I want you to be real with God. Yeah. Because God is looking for someone real. And I know that you're looking for someone real. I'm looking for something real. Me too. And God, is, God is real. Be real. Yeah. It's our little little slogan there, but it means so much. It means so much. It hit me that day. It wasn't that cool. Wasn't even planning on being the little be real thing when we said no. at the beginning. I know. But it just was like bam. It just popped out. It's just bam. God yeah. is looking for someone real. Yeah. And we're looking for something real to hold on to. <coughs> Can't so, take nothing with us. Why don't we all just now do or it. forever? Can't take nothing with us. I mean, really, you don't have anything. Can't even hold on to yourself. Christ. Mm -mm. Christ is it. Bottom line. That's who, it. Who am I? As soon as you accept why that. Why am I here? As soon as you accept that and realize that and know it, you'll have it. And, and he'll have you. And you'll realize. You'll see all these truths. You'll see all these truths. It doesn't take study. Yeah. It doesn't take uh, an intellectual mind. It's simple as all get out. It, it takes, <laughs> you can't say it no more southern. Takes your it's heart. Simple as all get out. Praise Jesus. It takes your heart. It does. It's you, just you. You can't do it with your mind. You'll use your mind. He said all mind body. So, yeah. But it, it's a heart issue. Mm -hmm. You know. And I've got the answer, man, for that question that I spent my whole life trying to find. He gave me the answer. Who am I? Mm -hmm. I'm a child of God of Jesus Christ. Why am I here? to bring glory to his name through him transforming me into his likeness. That's it. As he glory transforms me in ever increasing glory to his likeness, I'll fulfill the purpose of my life. But who am I? You're a child of God, of Jesus Christ. That's the answer. We spend our life. Who am I? And we don't feel special. We don't feel needed. We don't feel love. We don't feel who everybody has. Life is life. Everybody's hurting, man. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't hurting today, it's right around the corner. But it is. how do I? Because that's life. Welcome to life. So, but he has those answers. Do you agree, man, with those answers that I mean, we're who am I? I'm I'm really not me. I'm a child of God. He'll use me. For what he's made me and my purpose is to serve him follow him and bring him glory through his truth that's it that's why you know? we were made for his glory yeah. he's going to get glory either way that's right either way he doesn't need us to do he it. does not need us at all but it's he wants just, us he wants us at love you know now, i mean it's it's not really we've trashed the word love i don't even want to get into it I but know, it man. is for him it's that's what well, he is love he is he is and I feel it today, man. I've had a, I've had a good time with you, man. I missed Same. you, brother. I like. I, Same. I didn't realize how much I needed even what you and I are doing up here, and how comfortable it is. Even one week without it, man, just uh, didn't feel as cool, man. So I Same. love, I love hanging with you. It was yeah. a great time today, it man. Was. Can't wait to see where he keeps taking us, one little brick at a time, That's in this. It in this weird little wall we're building that's it with praise him. god so. and i appreciate the listeners and listening in and yeah. all that stuff and i just thank you uh, thank them for taking the time to, to to listen up and just hoping that they'll they'll get in there yeah get to know him have that relationship i can't say it enough i know all this stuff yeah. i was just talking yesterday to yeah. somebody and i said we're you know i had to do this too and i still do this on a daily thing where is god in our top 10 list 
Really, where's God in our top ten list of things? You take your hand, just say five. He might not even be in the top five. He wasn't even in my top ten to start out with. But you, you take the you take you five of your hand, number five, and you label from one to five what you spend most of your time doing. With what number one, I, I take the whole week, and what do you spend the most time doing? What do you spend the most time doing? Number one, it's measurable. Yeah. So. Number two, what do you take? The second, what is second is you spend your most time all week doing. Then you you do that all the way down to number five, or you might have to go to ten. Where's God in that ten? And that, is he even in the top ten? He was not in my top ten when I did that. It was work. Number one, number two, watching TV. Number three, my family wasn't even in the top two. I mean, it, I don't even think they honest. were number three. I can't even remember where my family was. Most people, God wasn't even honest. in the top ten. And I was just like, wow. That's most people, Daniel. Wow. How much time am I spending in the Word? How much time am I spending in prayer? How much time am I talking to Him? And that's, Having a relationship with Him. One hour a week at a church building where I really don't even have a relationship with Him. I'm listening to somebody else read the love letter that He wrote to me. <laughs> I mean, really? And so that, I just challenge anybody that's listening to do that. How much time? You spend in a week. What's your number one thing that you spend doing? Work? Watching TV? What is it? On the computer? What is it? And what that breakdown is, man, is and you what wonder, you love. And you wonder why your life is where you're at. You wonder why you're like where you're at in your life. Why? I'm not getting my prayers answered. I'm not listening. He's not listening to me. He's. I don't have the. I don't have a relationship with him. Why? Where's your time spent? I mean, really? I had to do this. And it hurts. Because in the world, you know, you're all just like... But I wanted to walk around all the time complaining, too. He's not listening to my prayers. My life is a joke. I just want to end myself. All this stuff. All this gloom, doom, despair. I didn't know life is just going down the tubes. I hated everything. Really didn't care too much for anything, really. Why? And I had to look at this, and I realized, where is he at in my life? Because where you put him at in that top five, if he makes it in that top ten, if he makes it, well, no wonder I'm putting all this stuff before him. I'm putting all this stuff, Go this fi- stuff, Go figure. before him, all this stuff. Now, where is anything? All that stuff that's before him on that top five in that top ten, all that stuff that's before him, where is any, answer this question, where is any of that stuff going to get me when I die? Where's work going to get me? Where's watching TV going to get me? Where's my family going to get me? Where's any of that stuff going to get you? When God calls your number on that day of judgment, where is any of that going to get you? Where? Where is it going to get you? You went all the way around, and I'm going to leave it for my part on two quick things you went all the way back around to this point that we started with by oswald chambers let everything else work clothes food everything on earth go by the board saving that one thing my last thing is let him play you me let him play me it's the goal of the day because i'll i want to uh, let it ring out with the guitar song by itself. Okay, we'll see y'all next week for my part. Guitar, let's hear that song.